G'day, I'm Steve and this is Woodworking Masterclass Unplugged or if you follow it on YouTube, it's Room for Woodwork. In here, this is actually in the corner of a bedroom of my home and it's called Unplugged or Woodworking Masterclass Unplugged where I use 99.9% .9 hand tools. First job I thought, we need a stool. And the thing about when I started the in-home workshop, so many people said, oh, you're mad. How did your wife let you do it? Oh, I wouldn't let my husband do it, yada, yada, yada. But the thing is, it's aimed for people living in apartments or flats or small areas. If you don't have a garage, you don't have an area outside, you haven't got a workshop you can go to. So in the area I'm working in here, it's 1.6 from wall to wall and 1.5 from the back of the wall to the front of my bench. I've got a new tool cabinet I invested in recently, which looks nice, my bed, my, my bedroom. My wife said, why don't you go out and buy a nice cabinet for the bedroom? So I did, it's a tool cabinet. I got away with it. So that houses a lot of tools. I've got another um, toolbox here at the end of the bench that houses a lot of tools. And the only power tools I do have is a jigsaw, which I'm thinking of doing away with, and an orbital sander with a small dust extraction unit set down here. So if you hear this sucking noise, it's the extraction unit. I do prefer the sander because that doesn't put any dust in the air and it makes it uh, for a more congenial living atmosphere. The guidelines my wife gave me when she finally allowed me to start this show was no noise, no smell, no mess. So dust comes under the category of mess. So that's it, no mess. But as I was saying, the great thing about having a workshop actually inside the house is that if anything needs to be done, it gets done a lot quicker because if I get something to, uh, that needs repairing or something that needs building, it'll go down to the workshop and it'll get buried on the benches along with other jobs that have been there for a long while. Whereas at least here, it gets done straight away, which is a bonus. And I've just been asked to make a small little stool for the pantry so those that... Um, can't quite reach the top shelf where I keep all my goodies. They can then stand on the stool and reach up nice and high and get to the top shelf of the pantry. So I'm going to do this out of pine. It's going to be a very, very basic build. So all I've got is two bits of timber, two bits of pine. One's 230 wide and I think it's about 900 long. Let's have a look and see. 900 long and this other bit here it's 90 wide and 1.2 long so if you like three foot by four foot so first thing first i want to cut the top and the legs the top i wanted about 400 and these aren't precise measurements whatever you know floats your boat it really isn't an engineering feat so I'll do this at 400, and we'll carry that line across. Is put a nice score down there with a knife, and that will give the saw somewhere to sit. So nice score down there. This is a piece I'm keeping. Get a chisel, any chisel, doesn't matter. And then on the waist side, which is this side, because we're keeping this side, just run the chisel in that knife cut. Now that's given me a nice wall there for the saw to sit in and a bit of a lead in edge. Just hold that down. And because I don't want to cut the bench, I'll saw nearly all the way through on the bench and then I'll move it off the bench and finish it off. I'm actually experimenting with two saws here just to see which one is the best for inside. Now I'm just going to move that off the bench. So now I can finish the cut off the bench and it shouldn't mark my bench at all. That 
to me, was much more satisfying than using the jigsaw. A little bit longer, but definitely quieter. Now this piece I've got left, I just have to divide that in half. There we go. First things first, I think we'll true the edges up. Let's get a square out. You can see that mark there. And I always put water into the vise because what that actually does is gives it the timber something to stick to. Uh, the water actually swells the grain in the timber and it won't move on you. What I'm doing is planing down to this line here. In order that I don't split it out, it's a good idea with a plane just to knock a corner off like that. So you've got a bit of a tangent on it and that won't allow the timbers to split out on the end then. And that is done. Now square these up and line both these nice flat edges here up together. On the shorter one, get your square again and just square that off as best you can. Have them sitting nice and close to each other like that so they're flush at the ends. Pop it in the vise, and we'll put it in the vise here. And now we've got to plane down to that line we just drew equally. So it'll bring this one down and this one down, and they should all be square. These wooden planes, I use linseed oil on the base. The metal planes, like these, what I use is a bit of candle wax. And these planes um, are actually Australian made. They're made by a company called H&T Gordon. But if you have Stanley planes, exactly the same thing. And as I said before, when you come to these end pieces, if you just knock a little arras off, you won't get splits when you're planing them. And for you that have just joined us, this is a workshop that's actually in the corner of my bedroom and I'm making a stool for the pantry. So people can reach up and get the top shelf, which means I'm gonna to have to hide my chocolate somewhere else. Okay, got a little bit to go on this side, not much. If you continue to watch, as we get more and more episodes done, you'll notice that I do favour the wooden planes. Um, I've just finished a three-day uh, woodworking show in um, the capital city that I live in, and I was demonstrating with the H&T Gordon stand, that the guys that make these, and after using them for three days, I just absolutely fell in love with them. Nothing wrong with the metal body plane, but my personal preference is leaning towards wooden planes. And speaking of wooden planes, you can still get them online. This monster, which is absolutely gorgeous, I picked up, I think it was for $40, and it took me in a day and a bit to hone it and to clean it, and it looked like absolute rubbish when I bought it, but, uh, they're out there and they just work absolutely superb. May use it in this project, if not, we'll definitely use it in another project down the road. And that, by the way, is a Matheson. Okay, so these are set. 
this is the other bit. We'll just true this end off here, which is pretty, pretty good. So I'll just plane that. The bench I'm using is just one that I made up literally out of some scrap timber I had in my um, workshop. And it's nothing special, nothing out of the box. The vice I've got on here is a number 52 record, which I picked up on eBay for about $20. So you don't have to have a lot of high-end expensive stuff to make stuff and to do woodwork in the shed, or in this case, in my house. Okay, so there's square, there's square. That's the top of the stool. And this are the two ends. What I want to do with the two ends so I haven't got two pieces sitting on the floor like that because it's very hard to get, especially if you've got tiles or slate, to get long flat edges to sit straight. I'm actually gonna cut a curve out on both of them. So then we've only got floor contact with a couple of inches on each leg. So in this case, it doesn't matter which is which. That looks nice up and we'll have both of those crown cuts pointing upwards, both of those pointing upwards. All right, so I've got to cut a circle or an arch here. Now to do that, I want to find the center of the board and to find the center of the board, all we've got to do is divide this in two. So to do that, I'm putting this on the bottom corner. I'm moving 300 to there, half of 300 is 150. Make a mark, that is the center of the board. So what I can do now is draw a line to there, down to there. Parallel these two up. And put a mark there. And then shoot that up there. Yeah, I'll come in 40 mil, which is, what's that? Inch and a half, something like that on both sides. And here as well. And look around my bedroom and see what I've got this round. If I can't find anything, I'll use a ruler. No, all right. What we will do is push these bench dogs up, that over there, get this big ruler here. Okay, so what I've done is stretch this ruler between two dogs and positioned the marks that I'm coming in so they're at the outside edges of the curve that I'm making with the ruler, if that makes sense. And we just draw that in. Well, there I have a very slight curve. Pop it in the vise. And all I'm gonna do is cut that curve out. Close to cutting that curve out. <laughs> Now it looks a bit raggedy, so I'll get a spoke shave. And again, um, you can get spoke shaves generally online for $15, $20. This one's a wooden one, but there are a lot of good record ones and Stanley ones still out there. I think they're uh, 70, no, 51s and 52s. The 51 is a straight one, the 52 has a curve on it for doing curves like this. Again, this is a H&T Gordon one and it's got the curve on it. There we go. That's better. So 
So this curve now, when it sits down on the floor, your point of contact is just here and here, and it'll be far more stable. Now transfer this curve onto this piece with a pencil. Same thing, cut this waist out. Okay, so that's both of those pretty, pretty close together. Now we've got to position these legs wherever you want them to sit. I would suggest, I don't know, whatever looks good. Um, yeah, I'll come in that far. So I'm coming in two inches on each side. And draw a line down there. And on the other side as well. And then get one of your legs, work out which you want out. That is a nicer side to that, so that'll face outwards. Position it on that line, like that. Put your finger on it and then just draw a pencil line down there. Mark that A and that A as well. So just we know where we're going. Have a look at these. Doesn't matter which way really on that one. So I'll have this one outside, put it on the line. Finger on there, draw a line. I'm gonna screw this as well as glue it. So I'll put three holes there and three holes there. This is one of the concessions I've made, a cordless gun. I could use a bracing bit, but quite frankly, I can't see the point. Now, what we have to do is drill a clearance hole. So the screw that I use, which will be one of these. Um, don't know what size. Do these. These are 8 gauge by 30 mil, so that's 8 gauge by just under an inch and a quarter. I have six of those. And here we go. I will put some glue on here and screw it on. There we go. All right, so that's nice and square. Clamped in, I've pre-drilled the holes. Now I've got to do is screw them in. In fact, it was interesting, my woodworking teacher in high school said, I should plan to get a job in an office because I was useless, useless at woodwork. Oh, how I'd love to meet him again. Anyway. Okay. Put this one on. Okay. That's the framework. Now we've got to put some um, rails on here or gussets or support so it doesn't collapse when we stand on it. Okay. What I want to do is have a slight bevel on these, so I don't know what that is. Whatever degree that is, according to this, it's 67 and a half degrees. I have no idea why it's 67 and a half degrees. These are great too, these um, hold, hold downs. And a rubber hammer, if you're working inside. Position that so this corner here will just line up with the corner there. Mark at this end as well.
and then pop that here and get that one off of there and cut this one. That is so much nicer than a flipping jigsaw and quieter and I reckon it's quicker. So there, that's the lesson. Don't get seduced by modern technology and all these new fandangle things. Sometimes the old ways are still the best. <sighs> now I'm just going to clean these up with a plane. That, I think, is no, not quite good enough. My tutor from years ago said, if it's not right now, it won't be right in a hundred years. So you might as well do it right the first time. And then you know, you don't have to go back and do it again. Even if it is just for a little stool to go in the pantry. But when you're setting your workshop up, Make sure you get good stuff, the best you can afford. A couple of reasons. There is a reason why expensive tools are expensive and that's because they're better. And the other thing is, if you've got good tools and you can't do a job, you can't blame your tools. I've done that many times. So well, it can't be my tools because I've got the best ones on the market. It must be me. Better go and practice. And that's it. You just go down to the shed or wherever you have your work area and you just practice. It's just got a little bit to come off there and we're going to be good to go and put this together. Having said that, I think I might invest in a new handsaw for up here. Look at that, just about the same size all the way around. Okay. Oh. Now we'll put this bracing on uh, with a pencil, put a mark there and a mark there. And what I'm going to do first is I'll drill pilot holes for those four holes there, then screw into the top and square this leg up, set that leg, then screw into this leg and set that leg. So here goes. Where's a punch? These great little things. Oops. For starting holes, um, normally I'd use a hammer and punch, you know, you put it there and you hit it with a hammer, but these are impact punches and you just put it where you want it to go and push down. And that's it. It makes the hole for you. Great idea. Now we'll just drill these. Even. Screw there. Screw there. Pop your square in and just move this out so it's square to the leg. Send that one home. And the same to the other one. And we'll just push on that. So it's square. 
and send this one home. There we have it. Do the same to the other side. That's good to go there. This one's good to go here. Just now we line these up best we can and screw these home. You could, if you want, put a bit of glue on there. Um, had I thought about it, I most likely would have. But seeing I didn't, I didn't. Knock these sharp edges off here. And for that, I'll use a Japanese saw. Now we'll just clean it all up and balance it out. And we should be good to go. Clamp that down, hold it nice and firm. And then we we'll just knock it back with a plane. And if you like, you can round it over as well. And you'll notice no sandpaper has been used. Um, what I'm going to do now is make sure it's flat. So it might be a little bit out and a bit rocky. So if that's the case, what we do is we just true the legs up. And yeah, it's got a bit of a wobble to it. So that's this leg here is a bit high. These are great if you're um, into woodwork in any way, shape or form. A tail vise, especially in, in um, limited spaces like I'm working in here, that's um, a bench dog. It just goes in these holes. You can make them yourself. Uh, I chose to buy these. And they work pretty darn good. I reckon there's a piece of toilet paper in that. Just take a couple of shavings off this one here. And there we have it. It's as steady as a rock. Now what I want to do is just round it all over and take any of the sharp edges off. You can use a spoke shave, or um, quite frankly, you can just use a, uh, an ordinary plane. The block plane that I've got here will do the job quite well. stool and all done with hand tools. There was, uh, yeah, unless you call the um, cordless drill a power tool, everything else was done by hand, no sandpaper involved, there's no splinters there whatsoever. It's smooth, it's functional and it will work. But until we meet again, as I say on Woodworking Masterclass, because I think this will end up being more Woodworking Masterclass than Red for Woodwork, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Bye for now.